What's up everyone, in today's video, we're gonna talk about my journey to becoming a software engineer that didn't really have much experience at all to going to a software engineer who works at Twitter, who's making big bucks, has a ton of benefits. I'm gonna break down the whole experience, right? So how I got the job, how I found the job, what the interview process was like, some of the questions they asked me, and tips and things that I would do if I was doing it all over again. So this happened in 2020. I don't work at Twitter anymore, but I did work there for a bit, uh, probably about a year and a half, and I moved on to something else. So um, if you're down to go on this journey with me, if you want to, le if you want to learn how to do it yourself, I'm going to help you guys with this. So uh, stick around and then we'll get straight into it. All right, so a little bit about my story. I'm not going to bore you guys to death with my background, but I did study psychology in university, and then I took a few computer science courses. I didn't learn really anything from it, so I consider myself self-taught because the computer science courses were completely abstract. They were in Java, had nothing to do with the jobs that I ended up doing, right? So in college, I was teaching myself HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I really, it was kind of hard, right? But I, I kind of got the hang of CSS, and then right away, I applied to like as many jobs as I could on Craigslist. I found a really crappy job at this small company just being a CSS developer. And I was just so happy to have a job that was like, had the developer and the title of it and I could put that on my resume. Had that job, got really good at CSS, got really good at HTML. Then on the job, started learning JavaScript, did that, got a couple years experience. And then here comes Twitter, right? So like, I'm just applying for more jobs one day and I see that Twitter is looking for a front end developer and I have experience doing front end stuff, right? Uh, but I looked at the job application and it says that it's looking for people who know React, uh, CSS, it knows object oriented, knows Node.js. So I definitely took a few months to focus on those different skill sets, build some side projects, um, ask my current job like, hey, can I just do some React stuff? Can I work on a random side project with React? They said, okay put that on the resume as like worked with react at the old job that way when i speak to the twitter people they'll see that i have react experience in production and it looks legit so this is one of the best ways to level up in your career is to actually even if your old job was easy and it wasn't that complex don't make it seem that way to your new job that you're applying to uh because pretty much they have no clue about the last job you did so you can really sell yourself and make it seem like you were working on some pretty intense stuff and i'm not saying you should lie about anything you did but really you know like it's all about marketing and the the art of interviewing you got to make yourself stand out and don't undersell yourself or don't undervalue yourself so that's part of the thing i did with twitter when getting that first big huge job All right, so getting noticed for one of these jobs is probably one of the hardest things to do because there's literally so many people applying to this job and everybody wants to work at these large companies. So like the amount of applications they get is crazy. They have software that automatically filters it based off of keywords and stuff like that. So I would say the first step is make sure you have a resume that highlights a lot of the keywords, like the technologies that are in the job posting. Don't just put random stuff either. The stuff that are on there that you're not familiar with, either learn it or integrate it into your current job so you could talk about it in the interview. But you wanna get past the filtration system so a recruiter actually sees it. So when I was applying for Twitter, I literally applied off of LinkedIn. I feel like LinkedIn's one of the best resources because a lot of recruiters for companies and third-party recruiters literally use LinkedIn. They have premium accounts and they go hard on LinkedIn. Another thing to help you get past that stage is if you know anyone that works at the company you wanna work at, so if you know anyone at Twitter, uh, I don't work there anymore, so I can't refer you, but if you have a friend that works there or if you have any connections on LinkedIn that work there, send them a message, ask them for a referral. It goes a long way because that helps you get past all the clutter of everyone else and that brings you to the tech screen stage. Uh, another thing you can do too is you can actually message some people who work at Twitter. You can explain your story in a DM and you can hope that someone you know, is interested in you, you know, you guys can have a little conversation on Zoom or through messaging and they might be down to refer you. This one might not actually work because this is like a, a cold lead. You don't know them. They could just ghost you, but it can work out. And if you really want to work at a company, this is the way to get past the initial barrier of entry, which is getting noticed by the recruiter. All right, so part of me keeping this uh, video kind of interesting is, you know, having some motion moving around my little apartment. Uh, the next stage is the tech screen. This stage is really important because pretty much you're always going to get to the tech screen as long as you don't mess up the recruiter screen, which is when you talk to the recruiter about your background and stuff. As long as you just like 
say decent stuff and you keep the conversation flowing you make sure you mention the technologies you're good at you mention and reference the things that are on the job posting you're pretty much going to get to the tech screen because the recruiter doesn't know too much about like technical stuff typically so they just want to push you to the tech screens to see if you actually can code or if you're technical at all um so usually within tech screens uh you can get one of two tech screens one of them can be pretty much a an algorithmic question which is where they just ask you like a leak code style question which is like based off of just like generic it's like uh language agnostic it's just sort of about like data structures and stuff like that the other one is a project-based question where you actually have to build something and it's a little bit more practical and a little bit more based on what the job's actually going to be like it's going to include some javascript html css if you're doing front end or if you're doing back end it's going to include some server-side code okay so i would suggest that you ask the recruiter all these questions, ask them a million questions, ask them what kind of interview it's gonna be, what's the question gonna be based on, if it's a leak code, if it's, is it leak code medium, is it leak code hard, what kind of leak code, is it like a raise, is it trees, um, if it's a project-based question, ask them is it using React, what language is it using, what's the task, uh, anything you should brush up on. The secret is that recruiters, their job is to help you win. Literally, their KPI, which is key performance indicator for their job, is to make sure that they move people along the process, but not just anyone, highly qualified candidates that are going to do an amazing job on the interview process. So recruiters are actually on your side, kind of even more than they are for the company, because they want to prove that they're good at finding people. So they want to put you ahead. And they'll let you know if you're crossing the boundary between asking way too many questions about what's appropriate or trying to get the exact you know, question that's going to be asked. But I would say push your luck and try to go for it because recruiters can help a lot during the interview process. Every interview process is pretty much a gamble. You never know who you're going to get. You never know what questions you're going to get. There's so much stuff to know as a software engineer. So I would definitely say use that as a resource and then study for it then, you know, you just got to go for it and, and do that tech screen and see what happens next. So after the tech screen, what happened with me for Twitter was that I made it to the on-site round. So, so far I've done like a recruiter interview. I've done a tech screen, which was a project actually. So they had me do like, it was a project that had like a half built out code and I had to like complete the project and finish the prompts and then in the onsite, I had to talk about the project that I did, talk about why I made the decisions I made, like why I implemented it this way and reasons for that. So moving on to the onsite stage, this is where things get crazy and this is where most people don't make it. This is where a lot of people um, crash and burn, but I decided, you know, I didn't decide, I made it past it, right? And there's been times I haven't made it past the onsite. Literally most jobs I apply to, I don't make it past the onsite. As you guys know, if you're already a software engineer, if you want to be a software engineer, it's very hit or miss. Uh, it's kind of a numbers game. You just got to apply to a, a bunch of jobs, do a bunch of interviews, grind it out. And then some days it pays off, some days it doesn't. And it could be from the smallest thing, like a dumb mistake or the interviewer could just not like you. Right. So in the onsite, there's six interviews. It's pretty much the whole day uh, at Twitter. I had to go in. Uh, two interviews were algorithmic coding questions one was system design question um, another one was a manager with the interview and then two other were like interviews that were soft skills right so for today's video let's just focus on the technical part of things definitely soft skills are very important but uh, i would say what's even more important was the technical side so the two algorithmic questions I hit up that recruiter. I asked him, I said, hey, like, what are the questions going to be? What should I prepare for? What are the kinds of questions? Right. So she let me know that one of them was a lead code style question. So I prepared for lead code style questions. And she let me know another one was a practical question, which means that it's probably based off of JavaScript. It's probably has something to do with promises, the, you know, the the nuances of how JavaScript works and maybe the nuances of how React works. So a specific question. So that taught me that I should really focus on the quirks of React. So maybe build like a little application just to have it fresh in my mind before. And then for the system design, that's pretty common in on-site interviews and that's building a system, right? So this was a front end system design interview and um, it pretty much was building Twitter, right? So this is one of the most common system design questions. And it's funny because I got this interviewing at Twitter, but other companies offer the same exact thing too. 
And I would say the time in between the screen and the on-site, they let you pick a time, right? Because they don't want you to mess it up. They want you to try your best and be the most successful. So I would say take your time with it. Don't give too much time. Like don't have test anxiety where you're really nervous and you just kind of like want to have like six months in between. I would say give yourself maximum a month two weeks to a month. And within that time, just prepare based off of what you think will be on the onsite. And then even if you don't get the job, all that preparation is great because it's preparing you for other jobs. So that's pretty much the overview of what the onsite is like. And then after the onsite, that's pretty much the big decision factor. And then you move on to the offer stage. So last part, offer stage is the best part. It's the happy part if you get made an offer and you know it's the sad part after all that work if you get rejected. But you can't take it personal because it really is a numbers game. There's probably like hundreds of people applying for that same role. So uh, there's a good chance you won't get it. But the more you prepare, better chance you're going to get that job, right? So for the Twitter job, I ended up getting it. I was so happy. I was so excited because I knew this would open up doors for my career. I was happy to get like a better salary. I was happy to get all the benefits. You know, it was just cool. It made me feel like all my hard work was worth it, especially as someone who didn't love college, who just graduated to make my mom happy pretty much, didn't even use my degree. And I'm a self-taught software developer, right? I started from the trenches. I was doing CSS, like broken little ghetto CSS. And then I learned more and more. Then I took courses and I learned the system design. I learned object-oriented programming, inheritance, all the, all the classic computer science concepts. Um, so I finally made it and this kind of like affirmed that in my career that, you know, I was always on the right track uh, in this space. But all this is to say is that you don't need to work at Fang to feel that way. I used to think you did, but I realize you don't because now that you're in, you realize that this company is the same as all the other small companies. Like a lot of smart people work there, but a lot of smart people work at small companies and startups and banks too. So you shouldn't make your identity out of it or anything. Um, it just is cool now that I look back in a career way, because uh, when other companies, when you're applying for more companies, when they see Twitter, obviously they're familiar with the company, the brand, the product. So it's easy to talk about in interviews and it helps you get other jobs in the future. Right. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much my experience becoming a software engineer at Twitter. I don't work there anymore. I worked there for a couple of years and then I moved on to other things just because, you know, I wanted to change after a while. I had a great time working at Twitter. From then, I worked at other Fang large companies. I've done a bunch of other huge company interviews, so I feel pretty experienced on that route. Um, dealing with like the offer stage of things, how to handle that. That's a whole other video dealing with how to do interviews, whole other video. I just wanted to give a brief overview of what my experience was like becoming a software engineer at Twitter. and. Um, what that looked like for me. Hopefully I was able to answer a lot of your questions. I do think I, yeah, I think I answered everything that I said I would answer in the beginning of the video. But if you have any other questions, you know, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you guys later. I'll let you guys know what's up. Um, like the video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.